David uh, Hart expressed some big ideas in our interviews on Gregory of Nyssa. And I think most people were intrigued, uh, but also a bit overwhelmed. And they would like to digest some of those ideas a bit more. So I've decided to take a few of those big ideas and dive deeper into them in a series of short TED Talk sized uh, packages. So here's uh, how I intend to do it. Our talks focused on Gregory's theology and in particular his bold vision of the creation uh, and the creator. Now that was creation ex nihilo. Uh, in contrast, uh, Reformation theology, which is the basis of evangelical theology, focuses more on redemption, the act of redemption around the cross of Christ. So one way of explaining the contrast between Gregory's big ideas and redemption is that Gregory starts earlier and he starts with mystery. Um, and I like expressing it by saying Gregory starts with the why of existence, why we exist at all, and the what. What are the conceptual coordinates and horizons of life and goodness? And he does that as a context into what we could call the how, how God works of redemption. So uh, I like to say that I mean, of course, Gregory did concentrate on redemption and salvation vastly, but they were informed by this earlier thinking. He started earlier in the whole process than the reformers did, right back with creation ex nihilo. And this grey area of the theology of creation is what um, David was pursuing. And I think re really David and I were having a conversation with Gregory and his ideas. Uh, but Gregory uh, considered that particular theology in a fairly specific way. Uh, he investigated all this act of creation through the lens of our experience of creativity as human beings you know, how we create things, how we think. Uh, in other words, he found echoes of God's creating in our human experience of creating. And what is, in fact, mysterious is something that we share in, in our ability to conceive. Now, he certainly acknowledges that we are approaching an ineffable mystery as we talk about God. So... Uh, we need to you know, tread, tread lightly. But nonetheless, Gregory believes that we can authentically trace the, the germs of that creativity in our mental experience, in our consciousness. Um, and he would look for that in our experience of mind. You know, mind is an important word. It, it is distinguished from brain, which would be the mechanical features of our brain. Um, it, it is really synonymous with soul. Um, and the particular aspect of humanity that um, I want to look at, and, and that certainly Gregory implies, is how we think, particularly around creating things. And I will, by implication, contrast that with um, analysis, which is a more downstream kind of thinking. Gregory makes this contrast because he believes that we're created in God's image. And, and for Gregory, that means we participate in the divine already. And in fact, our journey of participation in the divine is probably the most consistent lens through which Gregory considers redemption. So that means our cognitive experience, our mind, is indeed holy ground. 
And the holiest of that holy ground is when we create. So our, my, our, our mind, this capacity of mind slash soul positions humanity as unique in the cosmos. And we're unique, of all that we do that's unique, is our ability to create. That is, we are initiators of new realities, not just cogs in a machine. So I'm going to unpack each of these discrete thought packages uh, from, from our discussions through this lens of experience of mind. And here's how I'm going to do it. Each of these packages will have three parts. Number one will be, you know, the, the, the idea, the big idea. And I'll capture this idea as a picture or a schematic. So this would be, I suppose, the theological concept that we're looking at. Uh, now, I have, have a very high view of pictures or visualizations that in, in some ways I believe is our most intense and rarefied form of language. It's a kind of poetics. Uh, and a, a picture or schematic can capture complex pattern uh, in ways that words struggle to do. They can capture the, the shape and contour of a concept, but they still leave a lot of uh, mystery ground for us to fill in. Then the second thing I'll do in each of those short pack, uh, packages is I will link that to our experience of mind, creativity, and, and, and a certain aspect of creativity. Um, for instance, uh, the first one I do, do will be on what's loosely score, called abduction, the capacity of our minds to have a leap of faith. I will do one on synthesis, which is our extraordinary capacity of mind to uh, see unity in diverse things. I will do one on intent, which is often called, you know, the queen of the mind. Um, I will probably do one on consciousness. So these are all aspects of the creating mind we have that are mysterious and really um, help us participate in the Godhead. I won't stop there. Um, for each one, I will illustrate what I'm talking about through a story. Um, otherwise, it'll be too abstract. And it will be a story of how this creative feature works in practice. Um, so, how do, how do we unpack big ideas? Let's start with the first bit. Um, I think ideas by their nature are more deep than they are complicated. So this means that, um, I'll just choose a different color here because if I color code this, I think it'll work well. I hope I can choose a different color. Nope, didn't work. Um, anyway, let's play on. This means that ideas uh, work somewhat like an iceberg. Uh, there is a small part that's above the surface that's explicit. And that's the part that, wo that words um, often try to capture. But um, there are deeper structures below the surface that are invisible. And these deep layers uh, that are underneath the words and form the words are mysterious, they're hard to get at. And to get at them often requires a shift in paradigm. If I really want to understand something, I've got to attack it at the subterranean layer, not just the explicit layer. I can't just you know, change words around, like changing a set of clothes. I've got to change depths, change deep structures. Now, if we want to get to this below the surface area, then uh, we generally have to resort to imagery, pictures and metaphors since these layers defy easy expression. Um, and so I will do that with schematics or heuristics, um, which will help us to understand them. Essentially, uh, the, these are sketches that, that, that worked as uh, what the Greeks called heuristics, which are uh, ways to diagnose and understand uh, the world. 
Um, and in my professional life, I developed toolkits of these heuristics, some of which I will use. Uh, the, uh, then what we'll do is we will look at um, the mind um, and aspects of the mind. Uh, I've mentioned some of the aspects of mind that I will talk about. Um, and these aspects of mind are really very much around what we could loosely call right brain thinking. In other words, we can characterize them, but they retain a sense of mystery. We, they, they are inexplicable um, by the mechanics of ele electrical connections in the mind. They're inexplicable um, even uh, in, in, in ways that we would try to describe them. They, they will defy description. We do them, we do them all the time, um, but they, uh, they will retain um, uh, mystery, mystery for us. Uh, and the, um, I think this is the area up here where we can really begin to identify some of the more counterintuitive ideas uh, of creation by deeply um, reflecting on our experience as human beings, as sub-creators. And whilst we do these things, uh, we generally uh, don't understand them. We take them for granted. And I hope to open up that, um, uh, that wonderful mystery in some of the things I talk about. Now, clearly that's how Gregory thought. He thought that we were images of God. And so we can find in ourselves the deeper aspects of God's character and dealings in our own experience as human beings. Uh, for instance, uh, some of the most, uh, and, and he shared this, by the way, in common with St. Augustine, although we contrasted um, Augustine and Gregory, um, I mean, Augustine at his best is magnificent. And this is exactly what Augustine believed. His great work on the Trinity um, was really, you know, the, the heart of it was looking at uh, the human experience of mind as reflections of the Trinity. And uh, some of the most profound writings on memory that anyone's ever written are found in Augustine's Confessions as he ponders the nature of God. So for, for Augustine, memory is not just a cognitive function, but an aspect of God's nature that we can share as we construct the past. It's a small way that we participate in the divine and the infinite. In a, in a way, memory seems to be infinite because it is not bound in time and space like our, like our bodies are. So that's the first part of each little module. But then what I will do with, uh, with each of them is I will um, finish off or by uh, creating a story uh, from, it, from my experience um, which will illuminate, um, I think, uh, the, re the practicality of these things. Um, so I've had the privilege in my life uh, really a fairly unusual privilege over three decades of uh, uh, of carving out a profession for myself and my firm of uh, what's loosely called strategy or innovation but i would best describe it as we we've been paid to orchestrate groups of people to think together effectively in order to design new situations so we've been paid to orchestrate what you could call some act of cre creativity and we did uh, unlike a lot of consultants we, we didn't do the creativity ourselves we were more facilitators of it which meant we had to understand quite a bit of the process of creativity I mean if you are going to charge someone a substantial amount of money and if they're going to really commit the future of their organization to this process you have to be able to articulate it so we were applying creativity rather unusually not just to art but to actually big systems um, or to organizations, human systems um, that we were seeking to help our clients transform. Um, and so that's where I will have the third part of the modules, um, a story. Um, so the three 
areas I'll cover is I'll identify some big idea uh, from Gregory slash David. I will use um, an, an idea that, that's generally mysterious and counterintuitive and paradoxical. Um, you know, for instance, David uses phrases like um, the metaphysics of divine infinity um, here. You know, the, and, and I think um, whilst we might say, think, oh, well, that sounds interesting, um, I think all of us are, are still scratching our heads somewhat. Aligning that to an aspect of mind and illustrating it with a story. And the first one I'm going to do will be on abduction. So you can look forward to that. We hope you enjoyed this piece by Gospel Conversations. For more information, please head to www.gospelconversations.com. Thank you and God bless.